Um, well, that's an interesting question because I studied chemistry and then I did a PhD in, uh, in radiation chemistry of enzymes because I wanted to become a biochemist. And my PhD in um, radiation chemistry was a, a so-called case award, which I did my research work at Harwell. Um, and it turned out that I didn't really learn, and it was on enzyme radiolysis, and I didn't really learn very much biochemistry, um, but I did enjoy the radiation chemistry and the nuclear science. Mm -hmm. And I subsequently applied for and got a job at Harwell. At, at the time, Harwell was the premier nuclear research lab in the UK. Some people might dispute that, but it was where research into civil nuclear power started in the late 1940s and had m many, several test reactors, experimental reactors, lots of accelerators, nuclear um, chemistry facilities, five or six thousand people working there so it was a a, a really go-ahead yeah. place and universities tried to come and use our facilities so it was a, a, an amazing place to be okay. well that's difficult to say because I mean I worked I work uh, recently we've moved to Cullum because Harwell's more or less um, that the nuclear side is, is closed, although the EPSRC side at Harwell have got, and Rutherford Laboratory has just grown enormously. Yeah. Um, but during my time, I, I, I had so many different pieces of work. I, I mean, I started off using the accelerator I've done radiation chemistry with to make radioisotopes, for, um, partly for medical work, some for ag agricultural studies, um, uh, and I spent some time doing nuclear reactions, looking at new elements. Um, then I moved on to use my radiation chemistry again to understand the behaviour of iodine in, um, in a hypothetical nuclear reactor fault. Mm -hmm. uh, this was all for the new Sizewell reactor that was being built and the safety case for it. And that was very interesting, and that took me out to Canada, where I was working at one of their national labs um, for, well, I suppose I spent about six months in Canada. And, uh, and then towards the end of the, my time with UKA or, and then AA Technology, um, I was working on molten salt, um, u the use of molten salts for, um, for reprocessing. So I was uh, reducing um, uranium, plutonium, neptunium, americium oxides in molten salts with uh, liquid lithium, which was quite exciting in a glove box. And then we built a, a and that was for a, a Japanese um, research group called Kriepi. Um, and then following that, we did some work for BNFL. Uh, making we made a big um, electro refiner so that we could elect we could um, electrolytically extract plutonium from uranium in molten salts uh, and then extract the plutonium a different way and that was um, that, that was also it was very new very stressful um, because it was a novel thing for me um, but absolutely fascinating and then finally um, we, and we, we got taken over by BNFL and in the last part of my career I've been looking at the behaviour of plutonium dioxide in storage cans and uh, the UK has or will have about 150 tonnes of plutonium dioxide um, stored in welded cans at Sellafield and uh, my research at the moment um, is is into what happens on the surface of the plutonium dioxide um, 
because there's always some absorbed water and with plutonium dioxide there's always alpha radiation and so we get radiolysis of the absorbed water. And I really can't pick out the highlights because the really interesting thing has been the, m the amazing variety of work, which you don't appreciate at the time. You know, it's just one, one job. But, but when you look back, the, the, the variety of work is, is just amazing. And, and there have been other things as well, but those are, those are the big, big projects. So yes, fascinating. And uh, you know, like I said, I've worked in Canada. Um, at the moment, I have some some interactions with the the Los Alamos lab, where they too st um, have plutonium in store. Um, and you know, there's chances to go to conferences and work with uh, you know a large number of people. Yeah. So yeah. The opportunities in the UK are probably with the the generator, which is at the moment is um, EDF Energy, um, who run our um, gas-cooled reactors and the one water-cooled reactor at Sizewell, and they are going to build another at Hinkley. Um, the the regulator, um, which was called NII, and I can't <laughs> I can't remember their their new name. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, Sellafield, where uh, they reprocess fuel, and there's a huge amount of legacy um, uh, material. And the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, which is responsible for the decommission um, sites uh, and um, our nuclear our nuclear waste, until in the end we have a repository. Um, so those are the main um, civil areas. There's 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 also a large number of um, of small smaller consultancy groups that uh, contribute into all this. And then overseas, most nu most countries with a civil nuclear power program, um, you know, have have employers. Um, I'm an EDF in France, for example. Um, in the US, uh, a large number of utilities, um, Canada, AECL, um, and the utilities, uh, and so on. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not so aware of, of overseas because I'm sort of gradually going out of uh, decommissioning myself. Yeah. But uh, uh, yes, that's 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 it.